The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain Chapter 11 The Prince and His New Friend As Miles Hendon and the Little Prince were walking away from the palace, Edward heard the news. A thousand voices cried at once, The King is dead. It made him very sad. He knew he had no father any more and he was alone in the world. The tears ran down his cheeks. Then there was another cry. Long live King Edward VI. Ah, he thought, I am king now. And he felt proud. Our friends came to the door of the inn where Miles Hendon lived. Suddenly they heard a voice. Where have you been all this time? If you try to run away from your father once more, I shall give you a good whipping. John Canty was standing before them. Is he really your father? Lad? Asked Miles Hendon. No, no, he is not, cried the little king, I shall not go with him. If so, said Mills Hendon, stay with me. And you, he turned to John Canty, you go your way. Or I shall kill you. So John Canty had to leave Edward alone and go away. Woodward and his new friend entered the inn and went to Miles Hendon's room. It was a very poor room. There was only a bed, a table, two chairs, and a washstand in it. He was very tired and hungry. Please call me when the table is laid, he said, and fell asleep at once. Hendon smiled and said to himself, he uses my bed as his own bed. He really imagines himself the Prince of Wales. But I like him and shall take care of him. I have saved him and I shall always defend him. I shall be his elder brother. He walked up and down the room, talking to himself. If my father lives still, after these seven years that I have heard nothing from home, he will welcome the poor lad. So will my elder brother, Arthur. But I can't be sure about my other brother, Hugh. Well, we shall see. We shall start for home as soon as possible. A servant entered with a hot meal. He put it on the table and left the room. Hendon went up to the bed where Edward was sleeping. The boy woke up and opened his eyes. Get up. We are going to have a nice supper, said Hendon. The prince got up and walked to the washstand in the corner. He stood there waiting. I want to wash, he said. Please do, said Miles Hendon. Still the boy stood and did not move. Hendon was surprised. He said, what is the matter? Why do you not wash? Pour the water, please, and do not speak so much. Hendon smiled to himself and did what the boy told him to do. Then he stood by until he heard another command. Give me the towel. Hendon took up a towel which was hanging almost under the boy's nose and handed it to him. Then he washed his face and hands. Edward sat down at the table and was ready to eat his supper. When Hendon came up to the table and sat down, the boy said angrily, How can you sit in the presence of the king? Poor boy, thought Miles Hendon. Only a short time ago he imagined himself the prince, now he imagines that he is the king. Very well. Let him be the king. I must pretend that I believe him. There is no other way out for me. I think you call yourself Miles Hendon, Edward Said? Yes, your majesty, said Hendon. To himself he said. If I want to pretend that I believe him, I must call him, your majesty. I must play my part well. Tell me about yourself, said the prince. So Miles Hendon told him his story, my father. Sir Richard, is very rich but he is not very well known among lords. My mother died when I was a child. I have two brothers. Arthur, my elder, an honest, good-hearted man. And Hugh, younger than I. A very bad man. My cousin, Lady Edith, also lives in our house, because she has no parents, both of them died. She was 16 when I was 20 years old. I loved her and she loved me. My brother Hugh pretended that he loved her too. But in truth he loved her money. My father, who loved high best of us all, believed him when Hugh told him many lies about me. In short, 
My father sent me away from home for three years. I hope, he said, that these three years away from home and England will make a soldier and an honest man of you. So you see, your majesty. I fought in the Continental Wars, and in my last battle I was taken prisoner and spent seven years in a foreign prison. When I become free at last, I hurried to England. I have just arrived. I have neither good clothes, nor any money to buy them. But the most important thing is that I have no news from home. I do not know anything about my people at Hendon Hall. Now I shall try to get there as soon as possible. And now, your majesty, you know my story. Your story is very sad, Miles Hendon, said the boy. You are a good-hearted, brave man. You believe these words, the king has said them. What do you want? Name your wish, Miles said to himself. What imagination he has! How well he plays his part! Poor child! I shall never leave him, I shall always help him! He was going to thank Edward and say he did not want anything. But suddenly a happy idea came to his head. I must not throw the chance away, because it is not so easy to stand on your feet all the time. He dropped on one knee and said, If your majesty is pleased with his servant, I have one thing to ask of you. Allow me to sit in your presence. Edward thought a little and then said, All right, Miles Hendon. I will allow you to sit in the presence of your king, and not only you, but your children and your grandchildren as well. Hendon sat down and began to eat with great appetite, saying to himself, It was clever of me to ask him for that. Poor boy, poor little king of the kingdom of dreams.